Hi everybody, Alex the Ploy here from Expert Forex and today I want to tackle the most important aspect of Forex trading that is the most neglected aspect of Forex trading and that is the calculation of what your account size should be when trading Forex. Now this is a skill that not even experienced traders have. And that is why it is so important that you grasp what I'm going to be showing you now. And it is so simple. In the end, it relies on two or three factors that determine your account size. But you need to understand them. And once you understand them, it is a skill that you've developed for the rest of your life. You never have to ask anybody about what account size should I use. Also, it's important to know this because if somebody tells you this is the account size that you should be using and you go away and do your calculations and you find it to be different, you need to open a debate and understand why there is a difference. So let's climb right into it. Today I got an email saying I want to trade this EA and it is particularly the RSI envelope trader EA. And and can you tell me what account size is appropriate? Now, that is why I'm making the, the, this video, because that person should be able to calculate the account size themselves, send me their calculations and say, is this correct? So yeah, I'm going to take you through the process and hopefully you'll learn a lot from this particular video. All right, so let's have a look at the actual information available to the trader. Basically, we supply the trading results for over a 12-month period, trading one currency using a mini lot. Now, again, if you're looking at trading results, you must make sure that you understand how they were created, how many currencies were used, what kind of lot sizing was used. We always use one mini lot because sometimes it equates to pips at the same time, and you can also compare a lot of tests with each other but essentially here's the results really great results the person used a ten thousand dollar account and almost increased it by five times over the 12 month period really great results uh, and the important figures here that we are looking for really is the maximum drawdown figure which is 473 now, I'll cut, we'll come back to this particular figure, but that is the most probably the most important figure that you need to focus on. So let's move to the calcul calculation process. And essentially, I'm going to base my calculations on the USD yen. Now, I must warn you that you must look at this and understand the principles behind this because each broker works out their figures slightly differently and you have to align yourself with the actual broker that you're using. But if you understand the principles that I'm going to show you, you shouldn't have a problem. So let's have a look at this. I've, I've got three columns here, one for a main account, one for a mini account, and one in, for a micro account. And whatever I tell you here is of general nature. These figures differ from broker to broker, from currency to currency. Now again, I'm assuming a pip value of $10 for the main account, $1 for the mini account, and $0.10 cents for the micro account. Now you'll all know that the yen pip values are slightly less than that, but let's just use those figures as round numbers to move on from. In fact, the pip values have no value and uh, no importance in this calculation i'm just giving that as information also i'm just making sure you understand what lot sizing is and that a main lot is 1.0 a mini lot is 0 0.1 and a micro lot is 0 0.01 very important that you understand that then the next bit of information which is absolutely critical for you to know is the margin that your broker will charge you when you do a transaction. Very, very important. Now, a lot of traders don't know that. They don't pay attention to that. Even the most experienced traders don't do that. Now, there's a number of reasons why people do this. Firstly, when we start trading, we open demo accounts and we open $50,000 demo accounts and we just trade and trade. 
we never have to consider margin in that kind of environment. Secondly, margin is not disclosed anywhere on the MT4 platform. It's the most ridiculous thing. The most important bit of information is not displayed on the MT4 platform. So I'm going to just show you very quickly a bit more about margin. A general guideline for margin is the following. If you're getting 400 to 1 leverage and your broker is using a $100,000 contract, I know this gets a bit technical, but you need to know these things, your margin requirement is going to be $250 or $25 or $2.50 depending on what kind of account you're using. But if you get 100 to 1 leverage, it's going to be $1,000, $100, and $10. Now, if you're in the States, for instance, your leverage could be 50%, 50 to 1, in which case you need $2,000 uh, for every transaction you do, or, or $200 if you're using a mini account and $20 using a micro account. Now you can see this is where leverage comes in. Leverage affects the margin that the broker wants every time you trade. So the, these are guidelines, general guidelines. Now the other method of finding out what margin your broker choose, uh, charges you is just open a demo account, a clean demo account with no open transactions, and then put a transaction through. Now, I've done this with three currencies just to show you an example. So I've processed a, a one main lot trade for the euro and look at the margin that Telenex charged for this transaction. It's $311. It's not $250. It's $311 because it, uh, certain brokers have certain practices. Some, some base the margin on the euro, which is the first currency. Some base it on the second currency which is the usd so some brokers will be different but in general you need to check every single currency with your particular broker so here we are uh, i need 311 dollars if i'm trading a live account and this account has a 400 to 1 leverage so uh, already those figures i need to adjust to fall in line with my broker but if i were trading the pound new zealand the figures would be different look look there i've got 355 that i've got to come up with a whole 45 dollars more than the the previous one because of this particular cross now let's look at the the usd yen the usd yen is 250 so the so the 250 shown here really applies to the usd yen as its margin so why do you need to know how much the broker wants for every deal that you that that you trade? Firstly, the, the next bit of information you need to decide on or to know is how many open deals will this EA or your trading system have on an ongoing basis? Are you going to trade four transactions at a time or eight transactions at a time some eas trade 50 transactions at a time you need to know that information very important very critical now this particular ea the rs uh, the rsi envelope trader ea is a special one in that it only trades you can only have four open trades at any one time the initial trade and it then does three top-ups and it only trades one of that group of transactions at a time. It waits till it's finished. Only then will it look for the next transaction. So you know with this EA, you can only have four open transactions. So I have put in the maximum open transactions four. Now this will be different depending on your trading style or the EA that you actually use. So why is that important? Because that's the amount of money you need on an ongoing basis to trade the EA or your trading system. So let's say we have... A four four deals going with this EA you would have to have four times the margin required to to trade one set of transactions so you'd have to have four thousand in your main account or four hundred in your mini account or three four f f or forty dollars in your ma main account okay so 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 that's the easy part because you can calculate it very specifically 
to the cent. So you, that, those things can be calculated. And as you can see, it, it starts mounting up into big numbers. Now the next one. The next one is you have to decide what kind of drawdown you're going to experience. In other words, what kind, what is going to be your biggest losing streak while you trade this particular EA? Now, this is not always easy to determine. With an EA, for instance, I remember we initially looked here and we saw 473. That's why I pointed out that amount. The EA will sometimes tell you what kind of drawdown you can experience. So there we have a guide 473. So, so I've just rounded it up to, to 500. So I've put in here 500 as a possible anticipated losing streak. And that you have to convert if you're, on a, if you're trading a main account or a micro account. So, so far for my mini account, I know that I need 400 dollars to finance open deals and i need five hundred dollars to finance losing streaks and believe me losing streaks happen to every single trading system or any s s single ea that you might ever purchase you only need to have two transactions in a row a negative and you've got a losing streak so you then add those two together and you get a figure uh, in this case, $900. So here's the last adjustment you need to do. You need to decide how realistic that $900 is. Is the estimate of your losing streak reasonable? Could it be double as big? Or could it be too pessimistic? So there is a percentage you need to apply to these calculations to Give yourself an idea of what kind of account size would be safe. Now, uh, in this particular case, and I call that percentage the personal multiplier percentage. And in this case, we've taken 40%. So that 40% is only if you want to have an additional cushion in your, in your... What some traders do is they say, I like putting a, a stop loss on my whole trading account. So in other words, they won't use this personal multiplier... They'll just leave it at $900, and when the account goes $900 negative, they want to be out. They want their account closed. They don't, the, the, the system has proven itself to be negative, and they want to be out. So, so a lot of people use this to calculate their account stop loss. Not a bad idea. Look, having a margin call isn't the end of the world i promise you it's 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 part of forex trading so don't think you that's the end of the world as long as it's a managed margin call if you've managed the margin call and you said before the time if if i have a drawdown of five hundred dollars and i have another one dollar drawdown i want to be stopped out and it's good to make these decisions while you still unemotional and not involved in the trading believe me when you get to th those kind of levels you're so emotional you can't make any straight decisions so so here's some ideas you can go for 900 and then use the account to stop yourself out or you can give the account a little bit more room and hope that it will turn around and become profitable so to summarize it's actually very easy all you need to know is your margin per trade then how many open trades you're going to be having and you multiply that to get your margin requirements during your trading process. Then you have to work out what kind of losing streak you're happy to, manage, to have with this EA or trading technique that you're going to have. You decide that before the time. So you decide on the, on the losing streak and sometimes that information is provided like uh, with EA backtesting and things like that, that information is provided. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you've just got to say, look, $500, if I'm $500 down, I want to get out. And, 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 and that's the approach you take. Um, and then you will know what size account you need. Then you can do an additional thing by adding a little bit of a buffer. Now this percentage takes into account some of the back trading results are based on very favorable 
results. So in other words, they not they the amongst the best results achieved in the past. They're not in the middle of the results achieved in the past. So that is why you need to have a bit of a buffer to take into account that the uh, results might be worse than they uh, anticipate than they were in the back trading activity. So it's only those three things that you need to do, but you need to understand this process. Very important. It might sound like absolute Greek to me, and believe me, <laughs> I'm married to a Greek lady, so I know uh, all about trying to understand Greek, but you need to know this stuff very, very well. Because when you become good at forex trading, really good, the art then becomes on account sizing because your return on investment, if, if your account is too big, your return on investment is going to be too small. If your account is too small, you're going to be stopped out and you're going to have no return on investment. So th these calculations are actually very important. The other thing that you must realize is that if you're unsure about any of this that I've spoken about, use the smallest account, the micro account where the pips are only 10 cents. Use that to break yourself in, to get a feel of how account sizing works and all that. Don't, don't go straight into a main account and risk so much money uh, on, uh, if you're not sure about account sizing. Keep your lots as low as possible and use micro accounts. Because a lot of people also say, oh, I've got a thousand dollars. Is that okay? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's better if you actually do this kind of calculation and then say, oh, well, if, I, if I've got a thousand dollars and this calcu calculation comes to nine hundred dollars, then I've got a bit of a margin of, of error. What's nice about this calculation is that if you run into a, a $500 drawdown, like is shown on the screen here, if you la draw, uh, run into that drawdown, and that is your mental stop loss, if you stop trading right then, you will still have $400 in your account, which you don't no longer need to finance margin for the next couple of deals. So you can now use that $400 on another system or another EA or another technique. So uh, this calculation has got some, let's say, fat built into it and you need to understand how it works. A lot of people get scared of by, uh, by maths, but this is critical and essential maths that you need to trade Forex successfully. So if you do have any questions, please leave the questions in the comment section below this uh, video. And from me, Alex Deploy, cheerio.